tools that we use. I'll do a quick rundown that way you guys will know. Of course, you're gonna need some oil rags, adjustable wrench. Um, this is my snap-on half inch. You're gonna need a half inch plug socket. We got um, a Matco ratchet with an extension. Oil filter wrench. This is a homemade um, filter punch. I'm gonna go over some stuff with that. And of course, a hammer. And you'll need a creeper or you can lay on your back, who cares, and something to catch the oil in. All right, guys, let's go get dirty. All right, guys, here I am on the driver's side of the truck. I want to show you a little trick that I know because this is a 2016 Freightliner Coronada, so urban glider kit with a 60 series Detroit. As you can tell, the front bumper of the truck's extremely low. So what we do to make it easier on us, we turn the wheel all the way to the right and you can go in through here and you don't have to worry about squeezing under there for us fat bellied fellas and getting hung up or whatever. So anyway, I'm gonna be on the driver's side of the truck and Bill's gonna be on the passenger side of the truck and we'll show you guys what we do. All right guys, as you can see right here is the drain plug. <clears throat> we got our oil pan under it. Let's take your square socket and put in here. And keep in mind, there's 10,000 different ways you can change the oil. This is our way, this is the way we like to do it. So that's what we're showing you guys. In this truck, we've had a little issues with a little bit of metal. So we're gonna try to be real careful where we can see the, try to get this out of here. Or we can see what we're looking like. All right, what we'll do, we'll just leave that there to drain completely, and uh, we'll go and show you guys kind of what we do up on the top side. We're gonna let all of this drain completely out. We're gonna give it at least 15 minutes. And then uh, we'll show you what else we do. All right, guys, you can see she's almost finished draining. Uh, it's had about 15 minutes of drain time on it. So we're gonna go ahead and plug her back up. and. Uh, clean all this mess up down here. I'll show you guys kind of what we do. Like I say, everybody's got their own opinions and their own ways of doing stuff. So this is how we do it and it works for us. Everybody's got their own way. And it don't take a, a tremendous amount of torque to tighten that back down when you're using a half inch drive long ratchet like this so keep that in mind guys one of the things we do while we're under here just so it's easier to tell if you got a leak later we go ahead and clean everything brake cleaner Everything nice and clean. It's easier to tell if you have a problem or issue later on. Now then you can tell if that thing goes to leaking later on pretty easily. Alright, that's all we gotta do under here guys. Let's get back up on the top side and we'll show you what's going on up there. All right, guys, now we're on the passenger side of the truck. One of the things I want to talk to you about real quick is uh, the way we do it, you want to make dang sure you've got your filters on hand. As you can see, the truck takes a 1971 Napa Gold filter. We've got two brand new ones sitting here on some old races. The reason why we do that, and that way we can fill up with oil. If you are working on a truck that you're not familiar with or you don't know the service history on it, do not do the service the way we do. Take the filters off. This truck, we service this truck all the time, every 20,000 miles, the oil and all the filters get changed on it so we know the truck. Um, and I'm fixing to go over here and let Bill show you kind of how we do it. All right, guys, what we are, we're right here on the uh, the front side of the truck on the driver, or passenger side. You can see that right there is a 1971 filter and Bill's putting an oil filter wrench on it. What he's going to do, he's going to go ahead and loosen the filter. 
and because of the Detroit, um, the way the filter system is, we punch a hole in the bottom of the filter to drain them, and then after the filters are empty, we go ahead and remove them. So he just did the front filter, he's gonna do the back filter the same way, and he'll punch a hole in them, let all the oil come out of them, and then we'll remove the old filters. Of course, we'll check for the gaskets to make sure the gaskets are not stuck up on the oil filter mount. We'll fill the new filters back with oil, and then we'll reinstall those. We'll let you guys take a look how we do that. Right, what Bill's done, he has loosened the filters with a filter wrench to make sure they come loose, and then twisted them back up hand tight. And you'll start with a filter that's the furthest away from you, and that way you're not working in your own oil. Punch a hole in the bottom and just let it drain in your oil pan. Better move that pan back a little bit. Yeah. Uh -huh. All right, guys. Now you can see both of them's draining, so we'll give them a little while to drain out. We'll fill the new oil filters back up. Get the old ones off. Put these on. All right, guys, you see we got uh, nine gallons open and the seal's busted. We use the mobile Dell back. We got the 10th gallon here. And what we're gonna do is fill up our filters here, get the old filters off. As soon as they're finished draining, you see they're still dripping. Get the new filters put back on, and then we'll fill it up with oil. We do things, like I say, there's a million ways you can do things different on trucks. We do the oil system first, then we move to the other side and do the fuel system. As you can see, setting them on those old races and stuff will help um, just keep the filter up right because the bottom's curved on them. All right, that's one gallon in. Of course, you can see they're still a little low, so we're gonna keep on till we get them completely full. What I normally like to do is I take my finger and run around the O-ring Run a little oil on the O ring so that way it don't go on dry. All right, now what Bill's gonna do is check and make sure there ain't no rubber hole ring left on there. And then we'll get him the new full filters. I always start furthest away from me on the, putting these filters on. So that way the back one's not gonna be in my way. Put the front one on first. All right, you can see he's putting a filter wrench on there. And he just gonna give it a little snug. Usually I'll go a half a turn with them, which I can't get a full stroke, so I'll get about a quarter of a turn and another quarter of a turn. All right guys, you see Bill got the um, oil filters back on hand tight and then he used the wrench or the uh, oil filter wrench to turn into another half turn. Now here's one thing I wanna do point out to you guys. Take the time and clean your funnel out. And don't take it a second, spread out and break it cleaner, make sure there ain't no dust, dirt, grime, or gremlins living in there. So uh, take the time and get that thing clean. All right, we finna fill her back up with our lifeblood. 
and give her a little oil. I won't bore you guys with that. Y'all know how to pour oil. We're gonna fill her up, pull the dipstick, make sure she's got plenty of oil in her. And then uh, we'll see what we'll do on the fuel side. All right, guys, we got our fuel filters here. One's a 3812, one's a 3120, both Napa Gold. So we're gonna go to the driver's side of the truck and we're gonna show you guys how we do that. Right, guys, here we are on the driver's side of the truck. You wanna unplug the wire. There's a petcock valve there. You can drain it. Get your old O ring on. Put the new one on. All right, what we're gonna do, we're gonna take this and make sure your petcock valve on the bottom is closed and then fill your new filter back up with diesel. is full. You plug your wire back in. You got one filter down. The next one's inside the frame rail. And I'll try to get over here when we show it to you guys. All right, this filter is right underneath the air compressor. Just a regular canister type filter. Be the 3120 that he just took off and we're gonna do it the same way we're gonna fill it full out of the jug
You do the same thing on this guys, you put your filter wrench on it and just give it about a quarter to a half turn. All right guys, now you see how we service the 60 series Detroit and uh, we're gonna clean everything up with brake clean, wipe everything down, make sure everything's nice and clean. Um, of course, we'll check the oil one more time and then we'll fire it for you guys. All right, while Bill's got the uh, oil checked in it and it's good to go, we're going to fire her up and let you guys hear how it sounds on the initial startup. When it fires up, you want to make sure you look at your oil pressure, guys. Make sure you got good oil pressure. Make sure nothing happened. All right, what I'm doing at this time, I'm walking around and checking the fuel filters, the oil filters and all that, making sure we don't have any leaks, drips, runs, anything silly going on. You just want to look at everything that you touched or took off while doing the oil change and fuel filter change. Just make sure everything is good to go. All right, guys, you see me walking around a truck, was checking to make sure we didn't have any leaks of any kind from the filters or from the drain plug. So that's how you service the 60 series Detroit engine. Um, the next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna check all the pressure and all the tires, check all the brakes all the way around, make sure everything's in adjustment. And then we'll check the transmission fluid uh, we'll check the clutch, we'll grease everything front to back, grease the fifth wheel, and she'll be done. Like always, guys, if you like this video, make sure to hit that thumbs up button and subscribe down here below. We'll catch you guys next time. Y'all have a great one.